Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to start going over chapter 5.1 from the Lock 5 textbook, Confidence Intervals Using the Normal Distributions. So we talked about the normal distributions, some of the properties, and how to kind of manipulate and get p-values in the last section, 5.1. We're going to use the same normal distribution and z-scores we talked about in the last section to uh, generate confidence intervals. First, let's do a review question. The central limit theorem, which we talked about in 5.1, and we're going to talk about it a lot more in chapter 6. But before we talk about it so far, this applies to the distribution of what? The statistic, parameter, null value, data, or standard error. Right, the central limit theorem applies to the distribution of the statistics. So that idea, if you generally only have one statistic, but if you, in theory, do many, many statistics, that central limit theorem says the statistics are going to be normally distributed for large enough sample size. We're going to come back and spend a lot more time on central limit theorem and its power and how we use it in chapter six. Okay, but for now we're going to move to, I think, a, an interesting study the authors decided to use as an example for this class. For this section is the Honeybee Bible Dance. So I put a little link right here, it's a short video. Let's see, I think I have it up here. Oh, no, I don't. There we go. Okay, let's watch this video. It's only about a minute. Honeybees have some fascinating abilities, among them being able to communicate by performing a unique dance. It informs hive mates where a newly discovered food source is located. Every cycle of this waggle dance roughly describes the shape of the figure eight. Let's rewind and look in more detail. The bee only waggles on a part of its route, the straight run, indicated here by the waved line. The secret lies in the direction of the straight run, or to be more precise, in the angle between the straight run and the perpendicular, which in this case is 90 degrees to the left. This tells the other bees that food is available 90 degrees to the left of the sun. If the angle is 60 degrees to the right, they'll be flying 60 degrees to the right of the sun. Oh, I think it's pretty interesting. I didn't know that about the bees. They, they dance for communication, but that's an interesting usage of uh, angles. So I guess bees know geometry. Very cool. Okay, so that leads to an experiment that was set up in 2010 out of um, Princeton. And the idea was a honeybee scouts investigate new homes or food source options. And then, as you just saw in that video, the scouts communicate the information with a waggle dance to let other bees know oh, there's some uh, good food or, some, or a new home. So scientists took bees to an island that had only two possible options for nesting. Right? So this is an experiment. The scientists set this up. One of the options had a very high quality and one had low quality. We'll get into that now. We just have to know that you know, entomologists made sure that one nest was very uh, great, a desirable location for bees to make their home, and one was low. And they recorded all four of these uh, information, pieces of information, quality of nesting site, distance to the nesting site, the number of waggle dance circuits performed that you just saw in that little video, and the duration of the waggle dance. So how does the number of waggle dance circuits performed differ by the quality of the nesting sites? So don't forget, there's two nesting site, sites the scientists set up, one very, very good, and one, you know, adequate, but not as good. And here's a, a quick visual summary of the data, looking at box plots. On your left, you've got the high, this is the, um, the very good nesting site for the bees that they would like. And we're looking at the number of circuits. So notice on the high, the median number of circuits is about 90. 85, 90 or so circuits, whereas for the um, food, or sorry, the home option that's low quality, the median, like it's way down here, it's zero. So actually a, a decent number of bees didn't even do a dance at all, and some did some dances, and then one, you know, really he went nuts, did over 400 circuits to let his uh, colony, her, his or her colony know that they found a good home. All right, and then the raw data says this is the average number of circuits for the high was 90 and a half. The average for the low was about 30. And the difference between these two is about 
And before we go on, notice right here, this low average is 30. The median looks like it's about zero. So this low has a very, very strong right skew distribution from all these outliers. And then the high is a little bit more symmetric. This is actually a bit more bell-shaped, but it's a, a slight right, but it's fairly symmetric. But for this section, we're going to focus on the 60, the difference of the two means. So the difference in mean circuits between scouts describing a high quality site and the scouts describing a low quality site was 60 different 60 circuit difference on average from the sample. So if we were going to create a confidence interval, like uh, what is the difference in the, the number of circuits from chapter three, we would go to um, stat key. And if we have to upload the data, I'm not going to do that. We're just uh, we're going to go to stat key later. Open up stat key. So that would be the confidence interval for difference of means. There we go. You'd have to uh, you know edit the data, enter in your data, or upload it as a file for means. That's why we've been focusing on proportions because you don't have to upload; you just enter the data. But the idea is still the same. This is for exercise hours, treat male and female. Um, let's see, edit data. Looks like male is group one, at 20 males, 30 females. And males exercise three more hours per week on average from the sample. But if we want to get a um, confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, or generate a couple thousand samples, we get that approximate normal curve or bell shaped curve. And then you click on a little two tail here in the middle and make sure that middle says 95%. Notice here we have two and a half percent in both of the extremes. That's two and a half percent of the bootstrap samples. And then down below we get the confidence interval, 95% confidence interval. Here. So going back to this is the bees waggle dance, the number of circuits. All right, that mean difference was 60, we saw on the last slide. We could do rant bootstrap distribution simulation to create this distribution. And don't forget, if we all did this, we'd all get a slightly different distribution. That standard error would be slightly different, but it should be around 16. But the point of this is to remember for that 95%, we want to keep the middle 95% and split off or chop off the, the, the largest or smallest or greatest or minimalist. 2.5% from each tail. And then we have left over that spot right here, about 28 circuits and 93 circuits. That creates the 95% confidence interval. All right, so that is one way to create a 95% confidence interval. This is the chapter three method. The other approach we talked about is to bring in this standard error. This is 16.38. And if you remember from chapter three, it said to create, take your statistic, which is the middle, the 60.7, uh, okay, this would be the randomization. So the middle would be 60.49, the actual difference of means, and then plus or minus two times that standard error. We get this formula from chapter three, and there we get 27.73 to 93.25. So not exactly the same thing, but pretty close. We're less than one off on the lower limit and we're very close on that upper limit right here. But two different methods to get a 95% confidence interval from chapter three. All right, let's say if a bootstrap distribution is normally distributed, we can write it as what? Remember this N stands for normal distribution. So you take the parameter and the standard deviation, the statistic, standard deviation, parameter and the standard error, or the statistic and the standard error. And this you kind of have to go back to chapter three when we created bootstrap distributions. We always want to make sure the statistic is the center of your distribution. So it's got to be B or D. And we want to figure out how much the possible samples can vary. So that is the standard error. So the center of the normal distribution will be the statistics and the standard error is the spread, the, uh, or the standard deviation of your normal distribution. So again, going back, oh, it's cut off right here, the middle should be about the 60, and then the standard error 
is the standard deviation of this common interval. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the difference was 60.49. Standard error, we got to be 16.38. So if we wanted to get a normal distribution, we'd want to enter 60.49 and 16.38. So we could find the middle P percent of this normal distribution to get the confidence interval. All right, I want to go through that. So if we go to stat key, 60.49, 16.38. Now for normal distributions, once you're on the main screen, it's down here to the right of theoretical distribution. Click that normal, and I want to edit parameters. So here I've got the mean. That should be the, let's go back, I forgot, 60.49. And here the standard deviation. That's going to be the standard error of the sampling distribution, 16.38. Okay, I have the normal distribution. And if I were to say click on two tail, for confidence intervals, you're always going to do two tail test. And I want to make sure that middle says 95%. And notice at the bottom here, we get 28.386 to 92.594. These are almost the same exact values we got in the previous slide for the 95% confidence interval. And here I took a screenshot of that value. So notice that normal distribution mean is 60.49, standard deviation is 60.38. And that's another way, the normal distribution way, to create a 95% confidence interval. And as I put right here, it's the same exact idea as that bootstrap idea we were doing in chapter three, but we're gonna use a smoother. So again, look at before, kind of summarizing what we just did in the last couple of slides. We had the bootstrap distribution here done in stack keys, the chapter three method. We could replace this idea of a simulation with a smooth curve. That's right here. The lower limit's actually identical, and the upper limit's a little bit off. And then this is a randomization distribution, so this would change slightly each time you did it, whereas the smooth curve would not. This would always be the same. And that's how we get a confidence interval. All right, uh, we'll talk about the standardization and then unstandard excuse me unstandardization in the next video